no lo he empezado todavía. Responses to the challenges of, of the companies that Chris will make a conclusion with um, saying what are the key measures of the lessons we can learn from these two companies. So, first of all, uh, fiber casting. Well, um, fiber uh, pencil makers were first started in, in West Germany around the year 1660. Numerous craftsmen uh, also set up shops in different villages, but especially in Stein. One of these uh, craftsmen was a uh, craftsman father. In his spare time, he made uh, pencils on his own account, and uh, he became so successful that soon he set up, was able to set up his own business. The business was handed down from generation to generation, and Walter Faber, member of the fourth generation of the family, raised the factory of Stein to the, inter to the ranks of international company. With a strong will, he followed the ambitious goal to rise to the highest, the highest position by making the best that can be made anywhere in the world. He set up institutions that later became standard, such as, uh, such as company health and pension insurance. So he founded a savings bank for his employees and made uh, various <coughs> apartment blocks for his workers. So we can say that his employees uh, live a um, relatively high standard of living. Also, water opened and um, um, a CEO office in New York. So with that, uh, Faber Castell became the first manufacturer, uh, German manufacturer, so the star in America. In, in 1872, the name of Faber Castell was first recorded in the USA Register of Companies. Uh, Faber Castell was also among the companies which um, suffered most after the First uh, World War and uh, was out of the American market for many years till 1944 when Faber Castell was able to set foot again in America. After after Wolfgang von Faber Castell, it, it has been the head of company since 1978. In two decades that followed, new offices and factories were taken on increasingly prominent uh, or founded around the world. And uh, nowadays, Faber Castell is uh, mostly produced in Brazil. About uh, this on the robot. Um, the company has its origins from the Joseph Dixon Oil Company of New Jersey, which was founded by Joseph Dixon and his son in 1827. Um, Dixon expanded to throughout North America, Europe, and Asia in 2005. Dixon Tycoon was um, acquired by Fuel. This is a 
thanks to Anthra Art Support, the forest manufacturer based out of um, in <coughs> Milan. And this acquisition allowed for many companies and <coughs> they create a global company. In 2008, uh, Fuel acquired uh, the German based manufacturer Lira. So, Dixon Ticonderoga uh, is uh, no longer produced in America. But uh, in 2009, they started producing the pencils for Lira. And uh, now, uh, Dixon has um, factories in Asia, Germany, Italy, France, and uh, South America. What is common between these um, <coughs> companies is that uh, they both suffered the uh, challenges of, global, of the globalization. And what exactly is globalization? This is the uh, global flow of uh, money, products, people, and information all around the world. And now, Oh, yeah. will tell us about the fortunes and responses of the companies. So both of Faber Castell and Nixon Technical have faced a similar <coughs> challenges posed by globalization. <coughs> Faber Castell is a very strong competitor, startup, <coughs> while Dyson Technical have faced many Chinese manufacturers. And However, they have responded very differently, so the consequence is <coughs> totally different. And firstly, we may talk about we may talk about um, Faber Castle. Um, Faber Castle has a very good leader who led the whole company to aid to solve the uh, problems. And this is Anton Anton Wolfgang, and he has a very good leader leadership skill. And um, he's, he's not only <coughs> he's not going only good at decision making, but also he he would like to listen to others' advice. Um, for example, in 1990, um, his consultant advised him to embrace the digital age, but he believed that <coughs> pencil is still the cheapest cheapest way for children, artists, and those who who didn't have computers. So he decided to <coughs> contribute more to improve their products. So on the other hand, um, he so he would like to listen to others' opinions, and he did take some advice. For instance, he took the advice about launching a range of premium products to reinforce the brand, such as luxury item, girlfriend favorite custom. As he found he found out some children in developed countries become Became much richer. <coughs> also, Faber Castle has a very clear strategy, which was being an independent company. Faber Castle found, found a lot of advantage of, from globalization. In the 1980s, it planted 10,000 10, hectares of sustainable, sustainable plains forests in Brazil for providing pencil wood. Also, a big nature natural rubber factory in Malaysia was also built for supplying erasers. The best the best thing it has done is the more toxic water based liquor. Liquor was introduced in nineteen ninety three. Um the company also care about care about a lot about the customer, what they want and they provide different products for different customers. And for poor countries, they will, they will provide they will provide a cheaper and sturdy pencil for the poor children. And as we mentioned before, Faber Castle have launched a golden Faber Castle, which is luxury items, which is <coughs> which has better design and with hexagonal shape and erasers for those in developed countries. In two thousand and one, the newest de design and both with Noble and his lip dot pencils were launched. Another way they developed their products is they used an environmentally friendly 
paints without harmful chemical in 1990, as both teachers and parents worry about the toxin in colored pencil, which may harm the, their children. So, um, we're going to play the video. <coughs> So the company wished to have more flexibility to run the company and develop better products for the market, so they decided not to take the company public. And the consequence of this company experience, as we can see, as we can see from this table, and the marketing and sales regions is not only in Europe, America, but also in Asia and Pacific. In, in 2012, the company's pencil sales is more than six billion in Europe, and the teacher in Europe now even urge the parents to buy their pencils. On the other hand, we can see uh, Dixon respond very differently. They try they try to find a very hard to find the cheapest way to pull, pull, buy, produce their pencils, such such as they use recycling paper, but they failed because the pencil jammed because uh, the products jammed pencil sharpeners, and they decide not to use the premium brand of wood, but use Indonesian, uh, with, with which is cheaper but lower quality. The same thing with the eraser; they decide to buy to buy them from Korea. Also, they have moved the strategy, and they established a manu manufacturer in Mexico <coughs> and cutting cutting jobs about forty jobs in U.S. facility. And in two thousand, they create sub subsidiary in China, but shut down the U.S. manufacturing operation. In two thousand and four, they they moved the the production to either Mexico and or China. So that Dixon, Dixon failed finally. Uh, in 2008, the Dixon Technology was acquired by the uh, Italian co conglomerate Fair SB, SBA. <coughs> so now Antonia is going to talk about uh, what Dixon Technology did wrong about its management. Mm. <coughs> Dixon Technology started up as a very promising business. Uh, the problem began in the early 1990s when uh, Chinese manufacturers um, entered the market with low-priced uh, pencils. Uh, Dixon was making management mistakes, uh, trying domestically to, um, to produce cheap pencils, uh, did not lower the cost or improve the business. Uh, research was done to try 
um, to make pencils out of recycled uh, um, yeah, out of recycled um, uh, pencils cases, but that was a disaster. And um, uh, they took steps in trying to find uh, cheaper places to purchase wood for production. Erasers were bought from a real supplier uh, instead of um, uh, rather than its uh, US supplier. Uh, the strength of the product in their uh, management strategy was that uh, the product and also the brand was well known and that uh, the number two pencil was not their own product and um, they had um, um, little competition to begin with and the uh, weaknesses uh, and the mistakes were that uh, they did not improve um, on their product technology fast enough and uh, it took them a long time to realize that uh, labor was cheaper in China and Mexico. Uh, they were uh, dependent uh, too much on uh, trade barriers uh, to keep competition at bay um, as well as to control foreign uh, competition and the quality of the pencils was um, uh, also poor. And the main danger of all was that um, they could have lost um, all their pencil industry to the foreign market and um, uh, Dixon did not realize in time that um, the economy was shifting more and more towards globalization. Um, since um, um, Dixon was so well established in the States and also well equipped with, um, um, with product uh, knowledge and experience, uh, it would have been possible to raise the power of Chinese uh, pencil makers and to um, somehow blow them out of the water. Uh, this could have happened on the basis of uh, marketing, um, for example, marketing, advertising, and quality. Um, there's a chance, there was a chance, uh, if Dixon um, uh, made the pencil American made, that um, um, a lot of pencils would be sold. Uh, because um, of the late patriotic movements in the U.S. And another mistake was that Dixon did not use their money or power uh, to go overseas and buy out uh, the company uh, they were competing with. Um, in that case, Dixon would now have uh, a shot at international business world. Instead, uh, they waited until, um, until the very last moment. Uh, Dixon had pressed the U.S. Uh, government to uh, stop the dumping of Chinese pencils uh, and start dealing at high tariffs. Uh, Dixon tried to lower costs by switching to different um, routes, but it went overseas to do that, and therefore it um, contributed to the Chinese economy. Um, and uh, realizing that it could bring uh, um, in finished pencils cheaper than uh, it could manufacture them in the U.S. Uh, Dixon established a manufacturing corporation in Mexico and in 2000 uh, created a subsidiary in China. So the pencils imported uh, into the U.S. for sale and uh, that seems like uh, um, a lot of um, uh, money to love and extra cost. And now Chris will talk about the key management. Yeah. Um, Fabric Pencil as a medium-sized as a medium-sized company active worldwide. They wish to strengthen their profitability and uh, retain their independence by the following success, successful, successful management key lessons <coughs> which they are committed. One, um, global action by the decentralized uh, entrepreneurial management. Um, they regard the world as a global ma ma market while taking into consideration the different needs in the regions. Their objective is to utilize the opportunities of globalization to develop Faber Castle into a global brand. Um, two, employees who act efficiently and responsibly. Uh, they encourage and demand <coughs> innovative and uh, enterprising thought and act action as well as international expertise. Co cooperative management style and teamwork are both promoted and demanded in the international overall per performance. Three, stringent brand management. And they, their main focus is on a stringent um, brand management from product design to adequate communication. An unmistakable communist design is a consistent part of their management philosophy. 
and uh, four, innovative quality products responsive <coughs> to market, market needs. Paper case law has kept growing despite the recession and globalization. In the past financial year, uh, sales increased by almost 6%. The firm is also grabbing market in the rich area by making their pencils better. And five, sustainable development forms are an integral part of their management process. In the long term, they can only ensure business success if they take socialist and, and environmental aspects into account as well as economic considerations. Their products are produced from ecologically sound raw materials, some even cultivated by themselves, and by using environmentally friendly process. Six, purposefully conducted, consistent market orientations and customer focus. Their everyday business practices in dealing with their suppliers, um, employees, and, the cost and the customers are aligned to sustain sustainability. Core ideas include compliance, <laughs> A product stewardship, a responsible human resource, resources policy, and a sustainable supplier management. And seven, international growth through a presence in all significant market. Um, successful strategic management is a constant <coughs> process of learning and adaptation in response to the some, sometimes surprising develop, developments on all significant, significant international markets. Carefully choosing investments will also have to ensure to secure the position of Faber Castle's Global Z. Through more, in, conclu in conclusion, through more than 250 uh, years of exi existence, Faber Castle has earned its uh, uh, global presence through commitment to, towards its uh, um, quality and innovation. Yeah. And that's